Hello and welcome to the 2022 Mastermind Grand Final with me, Clive Myrie. The first finalist in the spotlight tonight is Ian Wang, an auditor from Manchester whose subject is the film and TV works of Sir Steve McQueen, the Oscar-winning director and artist. Alice Walker, a retired IT consultant from Derbyshire, who will be answering questions on the Peak District National Park. Helena Ayres, a solicitor and editor from Cambridgeshire. She'll be answering questions on the medieval Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. Anthony Fish, a community safety officer from South Wales, whose specialist subject is the classic television sitcom Open All Hours. Patrick Buckingham, a solicitor from London, whose subject is the early 20th century Hollywood star Carol Lombard. And Sarah Trevathan, an environment and safety consultant from Bury. Her subject, the pioneering sculptor Dame Barbara Hepworth. <laughs> When it comes to quizzing, there is only one Everest, the peak all contenders want to conquer, and that is Mastermind. Tonight's six finalists left base camp quite some time ago now. They survived the grueling heats to reach the semi-finals, then pushed on higher as others were left behind. But who will best endure the blizzard of questions about to rain down on them to reach the summit and enjoy the view as the nation's newest Mastermind champion in this its 50th year. Who will it be who will take home this stunning glass bowl made by Dennis Mann? Who will it be that goes down in quizzing history? Two minutes on their specialist subject and two and a half minutes on general knowledge will decide. So would our first finalist join me, please? Your name? Ian Wang. Your occupation? Auditor. And your specialist subject? The film and TV works of Steve McQueen. My family are definitely my biggest supporters. My brother is the person I do quizzes with the most. When we go to pub quizzes, he always gets more because there's always like lots of film stuff and I'm just a bit rubbish at that, and film and music. When I was at university, I was part of the Corpus Christi College Cambridge University Challenge team that made it to the final a few years ago. His feature films include Hunger and yeah. 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. Steve McQueen. Correct. <laughs> My specialist subject for the final is the films and TV works of Steve McQueen. He's made lots of films in Hollywood, but he's also made independent work, so he directed 12 Years a Slave and was the first uh, black director to win the Oscar for Best Picture. He's also done the TV series Small Axe, which is about black history in London. My mum was really the one who kind of inspired my love of film, and we went to the cinema a lot together growing up. Hey, Ian, Ali Plum here, the man lucky enough to call himself Radio One's wow. film critic, just to say congratulations on making it through to the grand final of this year's Mastermind. I am beyond impressed, and I just love your subject choice, Sir Steve McQueen. And just to avoid any confusion, Let's hear from the man himself. Hi Ian, Steve McQueen here. I'm really chuffed that you've chosen my film and TV work for your special subject for the Mastermind Grand Final. My mother will be best pleased. Good luck tonight and I'm thinking of you and uh, hope you do your best. Take care. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. That's very exciting. He knows my name. <laughs> yeah. My preparation for the final is this deck of about 700 flashcards. The final is going to be so competitive and I know I have to do a lot of work to reach that level. I think it's it's what I have to do. I'm 23 now and if I win the final, I'll be the youngest ever Mastermind champion, so I'll be breaking Jonathan Gibson's record for last year. Jonathan and I were actually kind of on the Cambridge quizzing circuit together and he's sent me a couple of nice messages actually since I've been on the show. Hi Ian. How are you feeling? I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a bit nervous. I guess I wanted to ask you if you had any advice for me as a, as a young quizzer going into the final and everything. Oh, well, I suppose the biggest advice I could give you for the final would be just try and manage your nerves when you're sitting in the contestants' row before you go on. I always found that the hardest bit, honestly, just watching other people yeah. and trying to play through my own round in my, in my head before actually going forward to the chair. It's been incredibly exciting to hold the youngest ever record, um, but records are made to be broken. I guess I'm not a completely objective because I'm a mum. I just think it's brilliant. <laughs> If I won Mastermind, I would definitely dedicate it to my family who have been following me along this journey from budding quizzer at university to now being on TV and, and being in the final of, of Mastermind. If I want to give him a good luck message, I'd say in Chinese, 加油! That means, well, literally it means 
put more oil in. 加油。<laughs> the film and television works of Sir Steve McQueen in two minutes, starting now. Which actor plays Bobby Sands in Hunger, Brandon in Shame, and Edwin Epps in Twelve Years a Slave? Michael Fassbender. Yes, in McQueen's feature film debut, Hunger, Bobby Sands burns a handwritten message, but a portion remains that ends with what word written in capital letters and underlined? Negotiate. Yes. What's the surname of the siblings, Yvonne and Paul, who were two of the 13 young victims of the 1981 New Cross house fire that's the focus of the first episode of Uprising? Ruddock. Yes. In Alex Wheatel, Alex shares a cell with a Rastafarian prisoner called Simeon, who gives him which book by C.L.R. James to start his political education? The Black Jacobins. Yes. In 12 Years a Slave, Mr. Epps forces Solomon Northup to whip Patsy after she leaves the plantation to obtain what item from Mistress Shaw? Soap. Yes, a bar of soap. The screenplay for the 2018 film Widows, an adaptation of a television series by Linda LaPlante, was written by McQueen and which author? Gillian Flynn. Yes, Gillian Flynn. In Mangrove, the claim that Althea Jones bit police officers is discredited after Dr Chaddy admits that he examined the bite marks. How long after the alleged event? Four days. Yes. In Blame, which poet describes the Black People's Day of Action on the 2nd of March, 1981, as the most powerful expression of black political power that this country has ever seen? Linton Cressy Johnson. Yes. In Education, Mrs Bartholomew gives Kingsley a book that contains the story of which African queen? Amina. Yes, Amina of Zaria. In Fire, one of the new cross-party DJs, Wayne Haynes, says that the last song he can remember playing before the fire was by which band? <sighs> um... Wailing Souls. Yes, Wailing Souls. In the front line, what's the name of the police stop and search operation in Brixton that began in early April 1981 and preceded three days of rioting? Swamp. Yes. At his job interview for the police force in red, white and blue, Logan says of breaking down barriers with white police officers, I've tried jelly deals, so if the boys are up for it, I will have them eating what dish? Rice and peas. Yes, what's the full name of the psychologist? I've started so I'll finish. Who, along with Lydia Thomas, holds a meeting to mobilise parents to oppose an unofficial segregation policy in special needs education. Hazel Lewis? Yes. And Ian, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 13 points. Thank you. And our next finalist, please. Your name? Alice Walker. Your occupation? Retired IT consultant. And your specialist subject? The Peak District National Park. I live on the edge of the Peak District. It's uh, obviously a beautiful area, but it's also a very interesting area, both historically and geographically. There's mountains and caves and rivers and historic buildings and industrial heritage. So I thought it would make a nice subject to do for the final. So to prepare, I've been reading lots of guidebooks and information about the Peak District, looking at maps, uh, reading up on all the historic sites. I walk quite a lot in the local area with my dog, Leo. So uh, it's a nice subject to do because I can actually get out and uh, see what I'm learning about. Well, congratulations, Alice, on reaching the Mastermind final and shining a spotlight on this wonderful national yeah. park. There's so much in the national park. It could be geography, geology, history. Maybe you can give me some ideas about this area. Well, the important thing is to remember that there's two geological places in the park, the Dark Peak on the moody gritstone edges and the White Peak on the limestone. We may ask you about that or, yeah, yeah. or the fact that it was the Britain's first national park. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And I can promise you that everyone connected with the Peak District National Park will be rooting for you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Alice is very focused with her quizzing. She spends hours reading all the books on her specialist subjects and making notes and testing herself. And I've tried testing her, but from her notes, but she just knows it all. So <laughs> it's pointless, really. <laughs> I also do Morris dancing. I've been a member of uh, Point and Gemma's Morris dancers for about 40 odd years. There's lots of different kinds of Morris dancing, but we do the type that's local to this area in clogs, 
as opposed to the men waving white hunkies. been on a few TV quiz shows before, starting back in the 90s on 15 to 1. I appeared on Eggheads with Hayden, my partner, but sadly we didn't manage to beat the Eggheads. Oh, it's a heart. OK. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to have better luck in Mastermind. Well, actually, I have already because I've completely exceeded my expectations to get to the final. I think she deserves to win because she's worked really, really hard and she waited a long time to come on Mastermind. And I think it's her time and I think a woman needs to win. The Peak District National Park. In two minutes, starting now. A traditional almond and jam pudding is named after which town known as the unofficial capital of the Peak District? Bakewell. Yes. In the mid-18th century, which landscape architect was commissioned to redesign the gardens at Chatsworth House? Capability Brown. Yes. In the late 1920s, in which former lead mining village near Eme did the writer Lawrence Dugard Peach form what later became a highly regarded amateur dramatic troupe? Great Hucklow. Yes. What name is given to the jagged gritstone outcrops north of Leek in the Staffordshire Peak District, which form an escarpment with the nearby Ramshaw rocks and Hencloud? The Roaches. Yes. In 1941, an errant German bomb caused significant damage to St Michael and All Angels Church in which village near Buxton? Earl Sterndale. Yes. What Neolithic stone circle located on Moreland near Moniash is sometimes referred to as the Stonehenge of the North? Arbelow. Yes. In his work, Fors Clavigera, the writer John Ruskin harshly criticised the construction of the Headstone Railway Viaduct in which Peak District Valley? Monsell Dale. Yes. What was the full name of the British designer and manufacturer who established a cutlery factory and design museum in the village of Hathersage? David Meller. Yes. Which peak, the second highest point in Derbyshire, has been described as one of Britain's only true deserts because of its expanse of virtually featureless moorland? Bleaklow. Yes. What was the name of the fort constructed by the Romans near the modern-day village of Brough in the Hope Valley? Navio. Yes. Which village between Leek and Buxton claims to be the highest in Britain at more than 1,500 feet above sea level? Flush. Yes. The ruined castle that stands above the town of Castleton is named after which Norman knight and keeper of the royal forest? Peveril. William de Peveril. Yes. What was the name of the temporary village of corrugated iron shacks nicknamed Tin Town that was built to house the workers and their families when the Howden and Derwent dams were constructed in the early 1900s? Virtually. Yes. The designer and architect Sir Joseph Pack Paxton and John F. Kennedy's sister Kathleen are among those buried at the St. Peter's churchyard in which village on the Chatsworth estate? Enza. Yes, it is Enza. <laughs> and Alice, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 14 points. Thank you. And our next finalist, please. Your name? Eleanor Ayres. Your occupation? Solicitor and editor. And your specialist subject? Eleanor Raquitaine. We live in a small village not too far from Cambridge. We used to live closer into London. We've moved out further, so we, we have a slightly more countryside -y kind of life. Rob has been a lot of support throughout, allowing me time to revise, and he'll text me random questions during the day, and usually I get them wrong because he picks very obscure bits and pieces to test me on. Our bedroom wall is absolutely plastered with revision notes and timelines. Hopefully I can get my bedroom back one day. We had a family get together to watch Eleanor on television the other night. Uh, my other, our other daughter came round with her boyfriend and our son. It was so close, we were just on the edge of our seats, really. I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire a few years ago. I came away with £125,000. When I'm preparing for the specialist subject round, I read and read and keep reading and make notes. Eleanor of Aquitaine is primarily known for being queen of both France and England and the mother of three English kings. She was also a powerful woman in her own right and owned about a quarter of modern France in her own name. Hello, Eleanor. I'm Judith Keppel, one of the eggheads, and I was also the first person, and so far the only woman, to win a million pounds on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. My million pound question is all about Eleanor of Aquitaine, your specialist subject. Eleanor was a wonderful, strong woman, great role model. 
and she brought me a great deal of luck. So I'm hoping she will also bring you, her namesake, to a great triumph today. It's a, a lovely message from Judith Keppel. Um, I had noted that her uh, million pound question was Eleanor Rakutain and I remember thinking that's, that's one I, I did know at the time, so it ties it all together in a way. I'm absolutely delighted that you chose Eleanor of Aquitaine. Eleanor is a very interesting person and not very many people know much about her. So is there somebody from more recent history w with whom we could c compare Eleanor and draw some perhaps useful parallels? The most obvious parallel would be uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> She's worked really hard for it. I think it's always been like a life goal for her to win something like this. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to see her do it. Eleanor of Aquitaine, sometimes said to be the most powerful woman of 12th century Europe. In two minutes, starting now, when Eleanor's father, William X, died and she became Duchess of Aquitaine at around the age of 15, which French king was appointed as her guardian? Louis VI. Yes. In which cathedral was Eleanor crowned Queen of France after her first husband, Louis VII, succeeded his father as king? Well, uh, Bourges. Yes. In the inscription on a rock crystal vase given by Eleanor to Louis VII, what Latin word is used to identify the king who gave the vase to Eleanor's grandfather? Pass. A few months after her divorce from Louis, Eleanor married Henry of Anjou, the future King Henry II of England. In which city? Poitiers. Yes. Eleanor and Henry's eldest son, William, died in infancy in 1158 and was buried in which English abbey? Reading. Yes. Which treaty of 1169 provided for the division of Henry's territories on his death between his and Eleanor's three eldest sons? Montmirey. Yes. What was the name of Henry's mistress whose death gave rise in later centuries to legends that Eleanor had murdered her? Rosamond de Clifford. Yes. Which archbishop wrote to Eleanor in 1173 to accuse her of making her sons rise up against their father and threaten the ecclesiastical censure unless she returned to her husband? Baldwin. No, Archbishop of Rouen, after her son Richard I was captured by the Holy Roman Emperor while returning from the Third Crusade, Eleanor requested help from which Pope? Celestine III. Yes, Eleanor escorted Richard's intended bride, Berengaria, on a journey which involved crossing the Alps in winter from Spain to Italy, where they met Richard at which city? Messina. No, Reggio. Eleanor was summoned to Richard's bedside in 1199 after he received a mortal wound from a crossbow bolt during a siege at which castle in Limousin? Uh, Chalice de Bral. Yes. When Eleanor ensured her youngest son, John, succeeded Richard I, which of her grandsons tried to seize some of John's French territories and take her hostage? Arthur of Brittany. Yes, in 1168, when Guy and Geoffrey of Lusignan ambushed Eleanor, which nephew of the Earl of Salisbury fought to hold off the attackers while she escaped? William the Marshal. Yes, during Eleanor's imprisonment, I've started to all finish, by Henry II, after she'd supported the rebellion of their sons, who was her custodian, who was made Chief Justiciar by Henry in 1180. Ranulph Glanville. It was Ranulph Glanville. Eleanor, you had just the one pass in the inscription on a rock crystal vase. The Latin word is mitodolus. And at the end of that round, Eleanor, you've scored 11 points. And our next finalist, please. Your name. Anthony Fish. And your occupation? Community safety officer. And your specialist subject? Open all hours. I'm from South Wales. I love all sports. I watch most sports. I also like going on long walks with my family. I would describe Anthony as very, very competitive. He obviously does lots and lots of quizzing. And if he doesn't win a quiz, he will go away and put the effort in then to revise and learn and, and make sure that that doesn't happen again. I love reading. I've always been into gaining further knowledge, things like capital cities, and then it's just gone on from there. Since I was about nine or 10, I've been interested in obtaining facts and, and, more, and more knowledge. It's, it's, it's like a drug, I suppose. My biggest supporters are definitely uh, my wife, Emma, and my two boys, Thomas and Harry. They're very supportive of all the quizzing I do, which <laughs> they need to be here because there's a lot of it. He's really good with English kings and queens and presidents, but then he's very bad with, like, chemical elements and video games.
For my final subject, I've chosen Open All Hours. I've always been a massive sitcom fan. Um, it's got two of my favourite comedy actors, Ronnie Barker, David Jason, and when they're together, they're just amazing. <laughs> I think Open All Hours was so popular because it was a bit of a perfect storm, I suppose. Just great actors, great writing, uh, just a great premise. This is for you. What's this? You need to open oh, it, read it out. Surprise, what's What this? is it? Oh, Sir David Jason. Dear Anthony, I'm told that you've got through to the Mastermind Finals and that you're answering questions on Open All Hours. Congratulations. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for being such a big fan of the show and I know that Ronnie Barker would also be thrilled that he was part of something so iconic thanks to the writing skills of Roy Clark. <laughs> Yours sincerely, David Jason. Wow. That's crazy, that's amazing. Let's get that framed. I can't even believe I'm talking about thinking about winning Mastermind, you know, being on Mastermind was special and to win that heat, to come through the semi-final and to be in the grand final. But if I was to win, um, I, it would just be amazing. He really does deserve it because he, he put so much effort in. Good luck, Dad. Hope you win. And if you don't win, you can always try in a couple of years, but good luck anyways. Open all hours in two minutes. Starting now, what's the title of the 1973 television series consisting of individual comedy programmes starring Ronnie Barker that included the Open All Hours pilot episode? Seven of one. Yes, the building used for the exterior of the shop in Open All Hours was actually a hair salon on Lister Avenue in which suburb of Doncaster? Balby. Yes, in all four series, the main sign above the front door of the shop reads groceries, Arkwright and what other word? Granville? No, provisions. In Beware of the Dog, which television character does Granville tell Maureen that baby Eric resembles when he becomes worried that the child might be his? Kojak. Yes. What word does Arkwright deliberately misspell on the shop window at the start of the episode, the ginger man, in order, he says, to lure clever dicks into the shop? Special. Yes. What's the title of the episode in which Granville reenacts the famous singing in the rain dance outside the shop using a mop in place of Gene Kelly's umbrella? The new suit? Yes. In the mystical boudoir of Nurse Gladys Emmanuel, Arkwright describes Nurse Gladys as mean, moody and what? Pass. What's the name of the small dog owned by the doting Mrs Tattersall that Arkwright allows into the shop because it always spends quite a lot of money? Suki. Yes. In St Albert's Day, what's the name of the foreign customer whom Arkwright suspects might be Granville's father? Statage. No, Static. The theme music of the main series is a 19th century song entitled Alice, Where Art Thou? Arranged for Brass that was originally composed by which Dutch musician? Asher. Yes, Joseph Asher. What's the name of the production designer who is credited on many sitcoms of the 1970s and 80s, including every episode of Open All Hours? Gleason. Yes, Tim Gleason in The Man Down Under. Arkwright says that Nurse Gladys Emmanuel's old admirer, Chalky White, used to think she looked like which Hollywood actress from the side? Jane, Jane Russell. Yes, Granville helps the indecisive customer, Mavis, to choose between two types of shampoo. One is called Super Sheen. What's the name of the other? Sunset Silk. Yes. In the final episode, when Granville tries to replace their dangerous till, a salesman visits the shop several times but retreats in a hurry on each occasion after Arkwright shrieks what two words? How much? It is how much. Anthony, you had just the one pass in the mystical boudoir of Nurse Gladys Emmanuel. Arkwright describes Nurse Gladys as mean, moody and medicinal. And at the end of that round, Anthony, you've got 11 points. Thank you. And our next finalist, please. Your name? Patrick Buckingham. Your occupation? Solicitor. And your specialist subject? Carol Lombard. Quizzing's a really recent thing for me. I certainly watched quiz programmes with my parents when I was a child. In fact, we really enjoyed it. But I think because my career was so intense, I never thought that I could actually do it. And it was only recently when I applied to do Brain of Britain, just on a whim, and did quite well, that I thought, hmm, maybe I should explore this. I found out about Quiz League of London, and we formed a scratch team that was in Only Connect in 2019, and it was a lot of fun. Etrovance? Circular. Correct. My specialist subject is the great 30s Hollywood comedian Carol Lombard. Now, although a lot of people might think of her as the wife of Clark Gable, 
She was so much more than that, and she is very funny. So to revise for the specialist subject, I've tried to watch as many movies as I can. We're caught. Dr. Eaglehoff is coming here tonight to, to expose me and Wally. You've got nothing to fear from any doctor who comes snooping around here. I've also taken advantage of the BFI, which is just up the road from me, where they have a fantastic library that not only includes a lot of source books, but also articles from magazines and journals going back to Carol's time. So you get that wonderful opportunity to look at contemporary source materials. This is a delight for me because I'm a big Carol Lombard fan. She knew who she was when she was on screen. She is unquestionably a very, very talented actor in terms of her ability to convey so many different emotions yes, and feelings. exactly. It's kind of a transition from women in silence films. And when the talkies came in, women started talking, they were kind of caught in another world between, am I gonna be the little woman at home victim, blah, 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 or am I going to be in the world, as a lot of women were during the Depression, and, and, and dealing with things? Now, I remember very much watching Mastermind in the Magnus Magnuson era with my parents. We just enjoyed it as a family, and I think there was always a degree of amazement when I, as a small child, got a question right. So I think there was always a sort of tacit understanding that I might do it at some time. In first place with 26 points, it's Patrick, which means that he goes through to the grand final. I wore the cufflinks. They were handed to me by my mother after my father passed away, and they're very precious to me. So I wore them in the heat, and I got through, and I wore them in the semi-final, and I also got through, so I think I'm gonna have to wear them in the grand final. Patrick's parents would be very, very proud of him to get through to the final of Mastermind. Do your best. Carol Lombard, in two minutes, Starting now, Carol Lombard was born Jane Alice Peters in 1908 in which city in Indiana? Fort Wayne. Yes, Lombard made her film debut at the age of 12, billed under her birth name in what silent comedy drama directed by Alan Dwan? A perfect crime. Yes, in 1927, Lombard received a serious facial injury when she was a passenger in a car driven by which friend whom she later sued for compensation? Harry Cooper. Yes, in 1928, while signed to Max Sennett, Lombard also made a low-budget feature film entitled The Divine Sinner for which production company? Ray Art. Yes, in the 1930s, Lombard became known for her screwball comedies, one of the earliest being what film based on the stage play The Best People? 20th century? No, fast and loose. Lombard married her first husband, William Powell, in 1931, shortly after making what film? The second in which they'd appeared together. Ladies' Man. Yes, after filming No Man of Her Own. With her future second husband, Clark Gable, Lombard jokingly presented him with what food item with a photograph of him on the wrapper? Um, milk. No, it was a ham. Lombard starred in the 1934 film 20th Century alongside which esteemed actor who later gave her a portrait of himself signed to the finest actress I have worked with, bar none? John Barrymore. Yes. What was the proposed title of the film that Orson Welles wanted Lombard to star in and which he then abandoned when she declined the offer? Smiler with a knife. Yes, in her last film, To Be or Not To Be, Lombard took the lead female role of Maria Tura alongside Jack Benny, replacing which actress who pulled out? Miriam, pass. Lombard died in 1942, aged just 33, when returning to Los Angeles, her plane crashed into a mountain shortly after a stop in which US city? Las Vegas. Yes. What was the name of the young Texan actress, later the wife of the director, William Wyler, whom Lombard helped to develop a brief career in films by providing contacts and publicity? Talashe. Yes, Margaret Talashe. In 1939, Lombard and Gable fled Los Angeles to get married privately and away from press intrusion. In which city in Arizona? Kingman. It was Kingman. And Patrick, he just had the one pass. In her last film, she replaced Miriam Hopkins. Thank you. And at the end of that round, Patrick, you've got 10 points. Thank you. And last, but by no means least, our final contender, please. Your name? Sarah Trevathan. Your occupation? Environment and safety consultant. And your specialist subject? Dame Barbara Hepworth. 
I live in Manchester, but I'm originally from Cornwall. I love to travel. Fortunately, my job lets me do that quite a lot. It's just great to go and see different places and talk to people, try the food. In the last couple of years, I've got into quizzing in quite a big way. It's addictive. Hello, tea. Oh, that's very welcome. My biggest supporter would have to be uh, my husband, Noel. How's it going? And he really enjoys doing the quizzing as well, but not quite as obsessively as I have. I just uh, make sure that she's supplied with lots of tea and just test her when she's got some questions that she needs asking. When we appeared together on Pointless, that was a lot of fun. We got through to the final and we, we won the jackpot, which is not exciting. <laughs> Single figure, still going down, still going down, passing to you. Have done it, very well done indeed. My specialist subject for the final is Dame Barbara Hepworth, um, the, the sculptor and artist. Probably best known for her large-scale installations, but as a woman being a sculptor, she started her career in the 1920s. It was a, quite a, a trailblazer. I've been trying to see as many sculptures as I can, so there's the Hepworth Gallery in Wakefield. So we're standing in a gallery which celebrates the Hepworth family gift, which was given to the city of Wakefield 10 years ago. The building was designed in order to house the collection. I grew up in Cornwall and I spent a lot of time in St Ives where Hepworth lived for a large part of her life and a lot of her work. She moved to Cornwall just before the war to escape the bombings in London. So that's where she was established for the rest of her career, was in Cornwall, but she always had a really special connection to Yorkshire. At the museum, people can see a real scope of the different kind of works Barbara Hepworth made. So we've got early figurative works such as kneeling figure, but we also have some of her really large scale works, including this work behind us, which is winged figure, one of the largest commissions that she made. And it's a life-size working scale um, of the commission that she made on Oxford Street in London. Good luck, Sarah. Everyone's behind you. Uh, just smash it. It's a shame I can't take any of these home with me, but uh, I'll just have to try hard and take the uh, Mastermind Bowl home instead. Dame Barbara Hepworth. In two minutes, starting now. When Barbara Hepworth was born, she was given what first name, although she did not use it professionally? Jocelyn. Yes. In her work, A Pictorial Autobiography, Hepworth wrote, my left hand is my thinking hand, the right is only a motor hand. This holds the what? The hammer. Yes. What's the name of the town hall in Florence where Hepworth married the sculptor John Skeeping in 1925? Palazzo Vecchio. Yes, the 1932 interview with Hepworth in which she famously stated, the sculptor carves because he must, was published in which art magazine? Studio. Yes. What was the name of the Italian craftsman whose advice that marble changes colour under different people's hands greatly influenced Hepworth? Giovanni Ardini. Yes, Hepworth's huge 1964 bronze sculpture, single form outside the UN headquarters in New York, that she dedicated to Dag Hammarskjöld, was cast at which London foundry? Morris Singer. Yes. What was the name of the nursery training college that helped care for Hepworth's triplets born in 1934 so she had time and space to continue working? Well, Garth. Yes. Torsos 1, 2 and 3 are abstract works from 1958 comprising three bronze sculptures that have the respective names Ulysses, Torcello and what? Um, cheese. No, Galatea. <laughs> Hepworth designed the scenery and costumes for which Michael Tippett opera that premiered at the Royal Opera House in January 1955? The Midsummer Marriage. Yes. What bardic name, meaning sculptor, did Hepworth choose when she was made a bard of Cornwall in 1968? Gravior. Yes. Which of Hepworth's curved form sculptures is named after the hill between St Ives and Zena, where, she said, the form seemed to enfold the watcher and lift him towards the sky? Travangan. Yes. In 1953, which town in Essex was presented with Hepworth's piece, Contrapuntal Forms, that had been commissioned two years earlier for the Festival of Britain? Harlow. Yes. Hepworth's late work, Theme and Variations, completed in 1972, was commissioned for the facade of the headquarters of which building society? Charnham and Gloucester. Yes. Hepworth's series of paintings and drawings of surgical procedures have started to our finish. Came about after she was invited to witness operations by which orthopaedic surgeon who treated her daughter Sarah for osteomyelitis? Norman Capener. It was Norman Capener. And Sarah, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 13 points. <laughs> Thank you. 
what are high-scoring first-round quizzes at the top of their game? Let's have a look at the scores. In sixth place, with 10 points, it's Patrick. In joint fourth place, with 11 points each, Eleanor and Anthony. In joint second place, with 13 points each, it's Ian and Sarah. And in first place, with 14 points, it's Alice. <laughs> So now it's the final push, one last heave to get to the summit of Mastermind, the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, then it's a tie break. So let's ask Patrick to join us again, please. So, Patrick, you start with 10 points. You've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Starting now, which British monarch celebrated her Diamond Jubilee in 1897? Queen Victoria. Yes, the household device referred to in North America as a faucet is more commonly known by what name in the UK? Tap. Yes, Lake Garda and Lake Como are popular tourist destinations in which European country? Italy. Yes, what name meaning conqueror is given to the Spanish military adventurers who took over parts of Central and South America in the 16th century? Conquistadors. Yes, in 2014, Sachin Adela succeeded Steve Ballmer as CEO of what major American technology company? Microsoft. Yes, in which 1970s television sitcom about a married couple called the Ropers were the title characters played by Brian Murphy and Uther Joyce? George and Mildred. Yes. Which British boxer retained his WBC World Heavyweight title in October 2021 with an 11th round knockout of the American fighter Deontay Wilder? Tyson Fury. Yes. Which British film director has been nominated for Oscars for Billy Elliot, The Hours and The Reader? Stephen Daldry. Yes. What common name for insects of the family Cerfidae, sometimes known as flower flies, refers to their ability to remain stationary while in the air? Fruit flies. No, hoverflies. In October 2021, which band had their ninth UK number one album with music of the spheres? Radiohead. No, Coldplay. Aston University is based in which English city? Birmingham. Yes, the composer John Williams wrote the piece Hymn for the Fallen for the soundtrack of what 1998 film set on and after D-Day in the Second World War? Saving Private Ryan. Yes. Corydale, Swaydale and Wensleydale are breeds of what farm animal? Sheep. Yes. What's the title of Damon Galgut's 2021 Booker Prize-winning novel partly set in apartheid-era South Africa about a family's pledge to give their maid her own home? The portrait. No, the promise. What's the usual five-letter word for the accumulation of loose stones and rocky debris on the slope of a mountain? Scree. Yes. In a traditional Scottish athletic competition, what name is given to a tall wooden pole or tree trunk which is held upright in the palms of the hands and then tossed? Caper. Yes. The UK version of which American reality television competition began in 2019 with Alan Carr and Graham Norton among the guest judges? RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. What was the nickname of Harold I, who was the son of King Canute and ruled as King of England from 1035 to 1040? Harefoot. Yes. What Italian word for stained is the name given to a drink of espresso coffee topped with a spot of frothy steamed milk? Macchiato. Yes. What was the rhyming professional name of the American stuntman from Montana who rose to fame in the 1960s and 70s for jumping over rows of parked cars and buses on a motorbike? Evil Knievel. It was Evil Knievel. And Patrick, you had no passes and at the end of that round you now have a total of 27 points. Thank you. And next up, let's have Eleanor again. Eleanor, you start with 11 points. The score to beat, as it stands, is 27 points. And you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge, starting now. What's the basic unit of currency in Australia? Dollar. Yes. In which Olympic athletics discipline is the aim to launch a heavy metal ball as far as possible using one hand? Shot put. Yes, the Russian revolutionary leader Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov became better known by what name? Lenin. Yes, which volcanic island between Java and Sumatra was the site of a devastating eruption in 1883 that was said to have been heard thousands of miles away? Krakatoa. Yes, yellowfin, bluefin and big eye are species of what edible marine fish? Tuna. Yes, the 2007 film La Vie en Rose tells the life story of which French singer who died in 1963? 
Edith Piaf. Yes, which American golfer became the oldest winner of a major title when he won the US PGA Championship at the age of 50 in May 2021? What? No, Phil Mickelson. What adjective derived from the Latin for goose means relating to or resembling a goose? Oisian. No, Anserine. Which American president was killed by Charles J. Guito in July 1881 after only four months in office and was succeeded in the role by Chester A. Arthur? Harrison. No, James Garfield. Which composer married the singer Constanza Weber in St. Stephen's Cathedral, Vienna in 1782? Mahler. No, Mozart. The 605-foot-tall Space Needle built for the 1962 World's Fair is a feature of the skyline of which West Coast American city? Seattle. Yes. What surname was used by the Bronte sisters when they chose male pseudonyms for the original publication of their works? Bell. Yes. Which American rapper and producer had a UK number one album in 2021 entitled Donda after his late mother? Uh, Drake. No, Kanye West. What name after a noted French physicist is given to the SI unit of electric charge? Henry. No, Coulomb. Which one of the major groups of nutrients includes sugars and starch and has a name that comes from Latin and Greek words for charcoal and water? Carbohydrate. Yes. What's the title of the 2020 television documentary series charting the rise of the basketball star Michael Jordan as he played for the Chicago Bulls in the 1990s? Uh, Space Jam. No, The Last Dance. On a standard snooker or billiards table, what's the name for the line that forms the straight edge of the D or semicircle and extends to a cushion at each side? Uh, the base. No, Balk. What school of art and design which flourished in Germany from 1919 to 1933 has a name derived from the German words for building and house? Bauhaus. Yes, what word that can mean susceptible is also used in healthcare to describe the anatomical position of a person who is lying face down? Prone. It is prone. And Eleanor, you had no passes and at the end of that round you've got a total of 22 points. Thank you. And next up, let's have Anthony again. Anthony, you start with 11 points. 27 is the score to beat in this race to the title. And you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge, starting now. Azure is the heraldic term for which primary colour? Blue. Yes, which chess piece is known in French as le cavalier? A knight. Yes, the journalists Maria Ressa from the Philippines and Dmitry Muratov from Russia were joint recipients of the 2021 Nobel Prize in which category? Peace. Yes, what stone fruit is traditionally the essential fruit ingredient of sticky toffee pudding? Cherry. No, date. Which Spanish football team beat Manchester United in a lengthy penalty shootout to win the Europa League final in May 2021? Valencia. No, Villarreal. Which novel by Charles Dickens is partly set in the Marshalsea debtors prison where the title character was born and brought up? Little Torrid. Yes. What 1996 film, which won nine Oscars, stars Rafe Fiennes as the title character Count Olmarshi, who is badly burned when his plane is shot down over the desert? English patient. Yes. What's the name of the Greek goddess of grain and agriculture, who was the mother of Persephone and the counterpart of the Roman goddess Ceres? Demeter. Yes. The 1920 Summer Olympics were hosted by which Belgian city? Antwerp. Yes. Which Conservative MP and former leader of the House of Commons, who has twice stood in party leadership contests, was honoured with a damehood in the 2021 Queen's Birthday Honours List? Beckett. No. Andrea Leadsom, the islands of Stronsay, Sanday and Chapinsay, a part of which archipelago off the north coast of Scotland? Shetlands? No, Orkney Island, Certified Lover Boy, which topped the UK chart in 2021, is the sixth studio album by which Canadian singer? Drake. Yes, the name of what medical condition characterised by pain in the lower back is derived from a Latin word for loin? Lumbago. Yes, what clerical name is colloquially given to the fatty part of a cooked chicken where the tail feathers were attached? A parson's nose. Yes, what was the name of the American nightclub owner who shot and killed Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas in 1963? Ruby. Yes, Jack Ruby. The stage musical Get Up, Stand Up, which opened in London's West End in October 2021, tells the life story of which Jamaican reggae singer? Bob Marley. Yes, what's the name of the triangular peninsula, part of Croatia, Slovenia and Italy, that extends into the northeastern Adriatic Sea? Ist Istria. Yes, it's Istria. The best-selling spy novel Silverview, published posthumously in October 2021, is the work of which British-born author who died? died 10 months previously. Um, 
Evans? No, John Le Carre. In 1995, the British athlete Jonathan Edwards set a world record of 18.29 metres in which field event? Triple jump. Yes. In a 2021 election, Pedro Castillo defeated Keiko Fujimori to become president of which South American country? Peru. It is Peru. And Anthony, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you have a total of 26 points. Thank you. Next up, it's Ian. Ian, you start with 13 points. The score to beat is still 27 points. And you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge, starting now. What's the positive square root of 36? Uh, six. Yes. What waterproof outdoor boots are named after a soldier and statesman who was a prime minister of the UK in the 1820s and 30s? Wellington. Yes, Wellington boots. Hans is an abbreviation of the name of which county in southern England? Um... Hampshire. Yes. What alphanumeric name is given to the Organisation of Nations whose leaders gathered for an intergovernmental summit held at Carbis Bay in Cornwall in June 2021? G7. Yes. In the 2001 film Shrek and its three sequels, which actor provides the voice of the title character? Michael Myers. Yes. Which philosopher of ancient Greece is said to have died in 399 BC from drinking hemlock after being sentenced to death on charges of corrupting the young? Socrates. Yes. What term from the French for to ward off is used in fencing to describe a move designed to block an opponent's attack? Parry. Yes. In Norse mythology, Fafnir had changed into what creature when he was slain by the hero Sigurd? Wolf. No, Dragon. In the men's elite race at the 2021 London Marathon, four of the first six finishers, including the winner Sisse Lemma, were representing which East African country? Kenya. No, Ethiopia. In cookery, the description a la Leonese indicates that a dish contains what vegetable? Potato. No, Onion. Which English city was stripped of its UNESCO World Heritage status in July 2021 as a result of new building developments along its waterfront? Liverpool. Yes. What name is given to the silk-producing organ at the base of a spider's abdomen? Uh, silk. No, bladder. Spinneret. What's the name of the Star Trek character played by Nichelle Nichols in the original 1960s television series and several feature films? Sulu. No, Lieutenant Uhura. Ronald's Way Airport is on which island off the west coast of Great Britain? Aruba. No, Isle of Man. What's the full stage name of the singer who won the 2021 Mercury Prize at the age of just 21 for her debut studio album, Collapsed in Sunbeams? Arlo Parks. Yes. Skimbleshanks, Bombalurina and Bustopher Jones are characters in what stage musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber? Cats. Yes. Thought for the day is a regular slot on what Radio 4 early morning news program first broadcast on the home service in 1957? Today? Yes. The US President Joe Biden has what middle name, which is his grandmother's maiden name? <sighs> Michelle. No. Robinette. Which toxic element with the chemical symbol CD has historically been used alongside nickel in batteries? Cadmium. It is. Cadmium. And Ian, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you now have a total of 25 points. Thank you. It is tight, ever so tight. Next up, it's Sarah. Sarah, you start with 13 points. The score to beat, as it stands, is still 27 points. And you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge, starting now. Excluding added time, a professional football match is played over how many minutes? 90. Yes, which work by Shakespeare is sometimes referred to as the Scottish play because of a superstition among actors that naming it brings bad luck? Macbeth. Yes, in the human body, the rotator cuff is a group of tendons and muscles that surround which joint? The shoulder. Yes, in July 2021, which American entrepreneur travelled into space accompanied by his brother Mark on board the rocket ship New Shepard? Elon Musk. No, Jeff Bezos. What's the title of the 1990 UK number one single for Sinead O'Connor that begins It's Been Seven Hours and Fifteen Days? Nothing compares to you. Yes, which major naval battle of the First World War was known to the Germans as the Battle of the Skagerrak? Jutland. Yes, the Battle of Jutland. The name of which plant genus is also the American name for a Buck's Fizz cocktail? 
Ne Moussa. Yes, the 1950s and 60s films Rashomon, Ikiru and Yojimbo were written and directed by which renowned Japanese filmmaker? Mifune? No, Kurosawa. Which English romantic poet wrote the lyrical ballad La Belle Dame Sans Merci, published in 1820, the year before his death? Byron. No, John Keats. Which province of Canada has a name that translates from Latin as New Scotland? Nova Scotia. Yes, at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which British gymnast retained his Olympic title when he won a gold medal in the men's pommel horse event? Rutherford. No, Max Whitlock. The name of which Celtic rock group fronted by Shane McGowan is originally derived from the Irish word for kiss? Pogues. Yes. In a cabinet reshuffle of September 2021, which politician became the second woman to be appointed as the UK's foreign secretary? Uh, Liz Truss. Yes. Which British actor won an Emmy in 2021 for his portrayal of Prince Philip in the television series The Crown? Smith. No, Tobias Menzies. A burning candle encircled by barbed wire is the symbol of which human rights organisation founded in 1961? Amnesty. Yes. What country estate in Buckinghamshire was the home of the government code and cipher school during the Second World War and was sometimes known as Station X? Bletchley Park. Yes. Which French rugby union club won the European Champions Cup for a record fifth time when they beat La Rochelle in the final at Twickenham in May 2021? Toulouse. Yes. Dover is the capital and Wilmington is the largest city of which small US state in the country East Coast. Delaware. Yes. What adjective is used to describe a mischievous monkey called George in the titles of a series of children's books written by Hans and Margaret Ray and first published from 1941? Marvellous. No, Curious, Dame Shirley Bassey sang the theme songs for three 1960s and 70s James Bond films, Diamonds Are Forever, Moonraker, and which other? Goldfinger. It was Goldfinger. And Sarah, you had no passes and at the end of that round you now have a total of 27 points. And finally, let's have Alice again. So, Alice, you start with 14 points. The score to beat to become this year's Mastermind champion is Patrick and Sarah's 27 points. And you've now got two and a half minutes on general knowledge, starting now. The numbers used to complete a standard Sudoku grid range from one to what number? Nine. Yes. Amman is the capital city of which Middle Eastern country? Jordan. Yes. Nakt Schnecker, which translates literally as naked snail, is the German word for what creature? Slug. Yes. The Loganberry is thought to have been created by crossing blackberries with what other fruit? Raspberry. Yes. Which tennis player won a record equaling 20th Grand Slam men's singles title by beating Matteo Berrettini in the final of the 2021 Wimbledon Championship? Djokovic. Yes. Ping, Pang and Pong are characters in which opera by Puccini premiered in 1926? Turandot. Yes. Who became the ruler of Russia in 1762 after her husband, Peter III, was forced to abdicate? Catherine the Great. Yes. What was the first name of Fred Astaire's eldest sister, who was his professional dancing partner in several Broadway stage shows from 1917 until 1931? Adele. Yes. In terms of population, which is the largest city on the South Island of New Zealand? Wellington. No, Christchurch, a competition called The Hundred, involving teams such as Oval Invincibles, Welsh Fire and Northern Superchargers, was launched in 2021. In which sport? Cricket. Yes, the 2017 book My Life, Our Times is a memoir by which former UK Prime Minister? Um, Cameron. No, Gordon Brown, who became the lead singer of the British pop and soul band Simply Red when it was formed in Manchester in the 1980s. Nick Hucknall. Yes, which small city near Cambridge is known for its cathedral, sometimes called the Ship of the Fens, which has a central structure known as the Octagon? Ely. Yes, what word follows rough, smooth, bearded and border in the names of four dog breeds? Collie. Yes, a cup-shaped structure called a Bowman's Capsule is a feature of which pair of organs in the human body? The kidneys. Yes, Tencent, Baidu and Alibaba are major technology companies headquartered in which Asian country? Japan. No, China. In the Avengers films released between 2011 and 2019, which British actor plays the character Loki, the god of mischief? Tom Hiddleston. Yes. What Japanese word meaning harbour wave is used in English for a swiftly travelling destructive wave often caused by an underwater earthquake? Tsunami. Yes. The abbreviation ESP for the supposed ability to be aware of things without using the basic senses stands for extrasensory what? Perception. Yes. Which clockmaker born in Yorkshire in 1693 is credited with the invention of the marine chronometer, a device that allows for accurate timekeeping while at sea? Uh, Harrison. Yes. In the late 1930s, which Spanish artist created a sofa modelled on the lips of the actress Mae West in collaboration with his patron Edward James? Starley. Yes. The legendary North American creature often called Bigfoot. 
is also known by what other name? A Salishan word meaning wild man of the woods. Sasquatch. It is Sasquatch. And Alice, you had no passes and you've done it. You have 33 oh points. God. Now, let's have a look at the final scores. In sixth place with 22 points, it's Eleanor. In fifth place with 25 points, it's Ian. In fourth place with 26 points, it's Anthony. In joint second place with 27 points, each Patrick and Sarah, all high scores. Yet, in first place with 33 points, the highest score of the whole series, it's Alice, which means Alice Walker is the 2022 Mastermind Champion and takes home the winner's glass bowl. Congratulations, Alice. <laughs> Incredible. Many congratulations. In the little film we made with your family, your daughter said this was your time. She's obviously right. <laughs> it's come to pass. Yes. You've been thinking about getting involved in the show for years. Many years, yes, yeah. I just thought I'd, I'm just going to have to go for it before I get any older, now or never. <laughs> Where are you going to put it? Away from the dog and the grandchild, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, many, many congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And a huge thank you must go to all the contenders in this series, each and every one made of the right stuff, courageous, willing to brave the famous black chair. If you think you've got what it takes to become a mastermind champion like Alice, or if you want to test your knowledge, just go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Join us again next time when the search begins for more masterminds. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I'm just a bit shell shocked, really. I was really not expecting to win, and the rest of the contenders were so good and so high scoring, I can't quite believe it, really. In first place with 33 points, the highest score of the whole series, it's Alice. I think my family are going to be amazed and I hope they'll be very pleased for me. I'm going to ring my daughter, Laura, to tell her the news. Hello? Hello, Laura. Yes? Hi, I've got some news. What news? I've just won Mastermind. <gasps> oh, my God. Grandma, what? Don't swear, you're live on camera. What? <laughs> Are you going to give Grandma a clap? What was your score? 33. 33? You've got the cleverest grandma in the country. <laughs>